Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dio, and in this series of Azure Synapse Analytics, we are going to be talking about SQL on demand. So we'll go through what exactly it is, how to get started with it, how does it differ from your typical SQL databases, um, and we will also talk about how it relates to other Azure data services like Azure Data Lake and Azure Storage. And just so a fair warning, this is gonna be a, a bit of a longer one than my last few videos. So stay tuned. And I'm sure if you stick through the end, you'll be a lot more knowledgeable on this. All right, let's head over to our Azure Synapse workspace. So back inside the Synapse workspace, let's go ahead and explore this a little bit. Uh, what we're gonna do is on the left-hand side, we are going to click these two arrows to expand the left tab. And what we want to do is click on data. So we should see that we have uh, the databases option. Uh, we'll go ahead and open that up. Clearly we have no databases at this point. Uh, to create one, go ahead and click on the plus sign and select Synapse SQL database. And you should see this uh, tab pop up to the right hand corner and it's going to give you the option to either create a SQL on demand or create a SQL pool. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about SQL on demand. So let's go ahead and give this a name. I will call mine YTDB1 as I'll probably create a YTDB2 at some point. So uh, go ahead and press create. And one thing I like about this, it's pretty quick. If I go ahead and refresh this right here, the database option, we should see the database right there. So it's pretty quick, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and expand the SQL on demand database. And we see some of the familiar things that we will probably see inside of a typical database. We see some tables, views, uh, schemas, security, things of that sort. But we know that you notice here that it says external tables as, as opposed to just tables. And this kind of starts to give a foreshadowing into what SQL on demand is. It's you are querying on tables that are coming from somewhere else, not necessarily tables that you are creating inside of the database itself. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, go through what exactly this means. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is flip over to the Microsoft Docs. And we see here, the Microsoft Docs, uh, the quick start uh, on how to use SQL On Demand, gives a quick description on what SQL On Demand actually is. So what it says here is a serverless query service that enables you to run SQL on files placed inside of Azure Storage. And files, these type of files that you can think of are CSVs, Apache Parquet files, JSON files, typically things that you want to store, right? And the way we've typically done this is you store them in the CSV and then you transform that into a table and then you query. But now what this is saying is right from the storage, you can just query right on these files. And Let's go down a little bit more into the documentation to see what else it talks about. So you can create a database just like you normally would. You can type in your create database statement. Uh, I did it with the GUI. You could do it with SQL as well. And here's the interesting part. So in order for you to query on your storage, your Azure storage, you need to do some prerequisites for that. So uh, here are some of the things you have to do. So first thing you need is your your master key right here. Uh, so you need to create your master key, give it a strong password. And next thing after that is create a database scope credential, uh, which will then be uh, in addition to that, you need your shared access signature and a secret. And once once that's done, uh, you can then create an external data source. After all this is done, we can then create the external table, right? So all of this is all the process that is gonna lead to creating that, that external table. It seems a bit daunting, but that's the purpose of this video. I'm gonna walk you through how to do this and simplify this a little bit. And the best way to do this is actually breaking down what this, what's going on right here. So uh, what this is doing is actually 
uh, going into this storage, right? This is a is the Azure storage, and uh, the this documentation has actually made it a public storage that me and you can access without having, oh well, I don't say without having credentials, but they've actually given us the credentials to access it right here. So how can we do that? The best way to do it is by first going into your Azure storage, uh, which I'll do in a second, Azure Storage Explorer to actually see what, what are we actually pulling in? What files are these? Uh, over Later down, we are gonna pull in CSV files and Parquet files and JSON files, but first, I'd like to see what I'm pulling in first, right? So in order to do that, let's go into my local environment and flip into our Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. And I add, I add in this video in the description how you can get the Azure Storage Explorer. There's a quick link. The way, the best way I could think of it is kind of like your Windows Explorer, but for Azure, right? So uh, in order to add the, the storage that we saw and see what is inside of it, what you're gonna do is click on this little guy over here, it's a little person, and press add an account, right? And what this is going to do is give you the option to connect in different ways. And if you remembered, we saw a shared access signature. So that's what we're going to click on here and press next. What it asks for is a, a URI. So you need that URI to get access into that story. So let's flip back into the docs we were looking at and grab the URI. So in order to do that, we are going to grab this, uh, location path for the folder and we're also going to grab the secret that's pretty long so i'm gonna go ahead and grab both of them and let's flip back into my environment and we should be able to uh put that in here but before we do that there's a little trick to this and to explain that trick um well i don't say it's a trick but just something you need to understand as you're doing this uh is that you are going to paste the shared access uh key the secret key right here and as well as the the link that i sh showed a second ago Let me just make sure i still have it in my clipboard a second here all right so this is the link so in order for you to have a full sas uri what you need to do is put a uh front slash and then put a uh, well forward slash and then put a question mark and once you do that then join both of these together and this is what makes your full uri sas uri shared access signature so now i can copy that and place that in here so can be sometimes a little tricky just making sure you make sure you put that that uh question mark and obviously a forward slash because this is a, it's a folder path once you do that you see everything else populates automatically for you I like that that's pretty neat and press next and press connect so now with this i now have access to that storage that it's been that's been called upon inside of the docs and the reason i did this is so we can actually see what's going on so with the in the i i'm gonna go ahead and open this up uh, the blob container, I'm going to open that up and now I see all the different files in here. So this makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to click on CSV and we see some files inside of here. Uh, we see some population files, some taxi files. Let's go ahead and double click on one of these. Uh, okay. Now we see a CSV file and I assume if I go into the JSON tab, I should be able to see some JSON files in here as well nice so now we get a sense of what's going on and you also have parquet files things of that nature so we get a better sense of what's going on in here so when i flip back into our into the docs this actually makes sense so when i come in here and create this key uh, when i create this data source with my master key and things of that nature i can now later now later later down on this query those files, right? Once I've said, hey, SQL on demand, you have access to these files with the secret and the master, let's go ahead and start querying. So uh, what I'm actually gonna do is 
do all of that inside of our workspace. So back in our workspace, what we're going to do is click on the developer tab. And over here, what we're going to do is import a script that I created earlier here and let's go ahead and press import. And I'll go ahead and import a SQL script. And what this script is, is basically what I showed you over here, just creating a database. So we're going to run through the same process. I have modified the script for, uh, for you to be able to pretty much follow along with what I'm doing here. And the script is going to be available in the descriptions below. First thing we're going to do is create the database. So let's go ahead and highlight that, uh, create database YTB2, run that. Okay, created successfully. So let's go ahead and verify. We'll flip over to the data tab and press refresh over here. Actually, that should be refresh on the database level. And nice. Now we see we have YTB2. Awesome. Uh, next thing we're going to do is create the master key. And what you need to do is just give it a password. I already did that. So in order to do this, I need to make sure I'm also doing this inside of the new database I just created. So it shows master here. Let's change that to YTB2. Just like that. If you having troubles uh, accessing this, you sometimes you might need to flip into a new database, press refresh, and then come back here and you should see the new database. Just wanted to point that out in case you're having trouble seeing the new database you created. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this to create the master key. Awesome. Created successfully. Next, we'll create the scope credentials. Uh, use the uh, shared access signature that we uh, used earlier and uh, create the data uh, external data source. So run that and all of that should work just fine. So uh, now that we've done this, we have established uh, this uh, external data source inside of this uh, new database that we created. So let's go ahead and check it out. Open this up, uh, open external resources and open uh, external data source. There we go. We have SQL on demand demo, which we just created. Um, I also added some um, scripts just in case you wanted to drop this and recreate it for for whatever reason. It's important to know there's an order to this. So just like you created the master key first, then the scope credential and then the external key. I mean, the external data source after you also have to drop it in the in that same order backwards. So drop the external data source first, the data scope credential and then the master key. So in case you run into that, just uh, follow this this order and you should be good. Uh, so now to the exciting part you have uh, brought in this uh, data set, uh, you've connected your SQL on demand. Now it's time to query on demand. So we don't necessarily have to pull this in. You can, if you want to, uh, I'm going to have a separate video for how you can pull the data in, but first let's uh, just run the sample script. So what we're doing is basically just selecting uh, top 10 on what is called an open bro set. And this is what allows you to query on the data that is inside of your uh, Azure storage. So we are basically just uh, picking the specific folder that we want, uh, looking through all the CSV files and specifying the data source and the uh, file format. So, and everything else you see is basically uh, basic SQL, right? And uh, let's go ahead and run that. That might take a couple of seconds, but uh, the goal here is just to show that you can run queries inside of here and uh, we're able to get the exact line of what we want inside of here. So uh, next thing you can do is uh, run the same sort of thing inside of a parquet file and a JSON file. Uh, for the purpose of time for this video, I'll probably just do one more of these, but you guys have this uh, file and you can you know, run different types of queries in here and uh, just start to explore, see the different things you can do uh, with SQL on demand. I really like that name because it really suits it because what we are doing is we are running a query on demand. We are connecting to an Azure storage and querying on CSV files, which 
typically you have to import into into your database and then query on it so uh great great uh great feature great uh tool to get familiar with and um in the next video we'll talk through the other option sql pools right remember when we created our database we had the option to create sql on demand or sql pool so uh stay tuned for the next one on uh when we create a sql pool all right thank you for watching the video hope you enjoyed it for questions or comments feel free to put that below don't forget to subscribe like and share with your friends so you'll be updated when the next video comes out stay tuned